this is a touchy subject for a lot of teams. It's kind of like looking into our the skeletons in our closet because unfortunately, software does not heal itself. And so we have to heal it when it's broken. And that's what refactoring is about. The skill of refactoring code is, I think, one of the most important skills that software developers need to know now and in the future. And it's one of the most neglected skills that I see both in college curriculums and on teams. Uh, a lot of teams that do agile software development don't devote any time to refactoring. And so the big message that developers get is hack in software. <laughs> and what happens is the quality of the code degrades significantly when that happens. And <laughs> It seems like it always winds up biting us. I mean, I've seen time and time again from clients that when they ignore their legacy issues, uh, the little these little bugs become big monsters. And so we want to avoid them. There's a saying in India, if you want to rid snakes from your house, you know, because they lived, some, some people lived, you know, near the water and um, the, the snakes would go because the homes were warm, would go underneath the homes and live there. And the saying is, if you want to get rid of a snake that's living under your house, do it when it's small. <laughs> Don't wait for it to become a giant, you know, monster before you start addressing it. And the same thing is true with defects in code and, and any technical debt, any burden that our code is, is bearing. We want to relieve our code of those burdens as soon as possible, because whenever we go into the code, we're, we're paying that price in the, um, the the time that it takes to slog through it, to understand it, to work with it, to, you know, fix bugs with it. And, and so we don't want to end up in situations like that. And in order to do that, we need to have good technical practices that support us in writing good supportable code. And we also need to know how to refactor because there are ways of working with even the most intractable code and improving it in a safe way. And that's absolutely critical because, of course, when legacy code is in production, you know, no matter how horrible it looks, as long as it's working, we don't want to touch it. And there's a huge stigma in many organizations around working with legacy code. I see it time and time again. And it's for damn good reason. You know, we make a little tiny change, something that seemingly is, is no problem at all. And suddenly the world explodes, you know, suddenly the program had sprouts 50 bugs and it's like we can't fix it. Each one of the bugs that we try to fix sprouts more bugs and so on and so on. And pretty soon we're absolutely lost. And we just thank goodness that we have a backup. Well, you know, I'm an old guy. So the very first time I did that, I didn't have a backup and I had to back it out. Boy, it took me ages to do that. And so, you know, we learn, we learn from experience. I think everybody has learned from experience that, you know, very often touching legacy code can be a big problem. And so we're averse to it, but, but there are ways to deal with it. And that's why the discipline of software development really needs to incorporate this, this notion of how do we safely refactor code? And I think when we do it, a lot of people are like, ah, it's the, the worst thing. I hate doing it. There's a group of, of software developers. We call ourselves menders. And uh, we like working in legacy code. And the reason that we like it is that we see these anti-patterns clearly. We see ways of fixing it clearly. And then that particular way of doing something that's not ideal goes into sharp focus for us. And we never do that ourselves again. So I find that I become a far, far better coder when I start refactoring other people's code and refactoring my code because I learn how to build good software. That alone, I think, is really valuable and worthwhile for, for building legacy code and working with legacy code. Just the learning experience alone. And th I think that's what menders realize and why they're passionate really about you know, working in legacy code. This is not a book review because a lot of the books that I want to share with you, I, I don't have handy right now, but I do want to share with you one book with regard to legacy code. Uh, and I think this is really still quite a classic. It's called Working Effectively with Legacy Code by Michael Feathers. And 
he offers a whole range of techniques for working with legacy code. And what kind of code? A whole range of languages from COBOL to C++. You know, he uh, it shows examples of how to do some of the core basic techniques in these different languages, which you can do pretty much in every language. The idea is that we create, usually legacy code is, is very difficult to work with. And one of the things that we want to do to make it safer to work with is put in good unit tests that lock down the behavior that we're, that we want to preserve so that when we go to change the code, if we wind up accidentally changing that behavior, it immediately tells us. This is what good software development is about. It's about good instrumentation, really, honestly. It's like, um, you know, an acrobat, uh, an artist, somebody who works in the high wire. It's about like safety. It's about doing these things, but doing it in a highly safe way. And understanding how to work with legacy code in this way, understanding the material in this book and a few other books, I think makes you golden as a software developer, because again, most developers don't know how to use <clears throat> these skills, these techniques, and <laughs> almost everywhere there's tons of legacy code. The challenge is, is that in my experience, most organizations are in denial of their legacy code, but some are brave enough to recognize that they need to address it. And so there's great techniques. We'll talk about some of the techniques from this book and other books. I'm gonna just quickly overview some of the ideas in this book and, and share with you some of the ideas that have come to light in the community after this book was published. There's a great deal of refactoring that can be done safely when we understand how to refactor. But many of the complex refactorings really do require the need for a good unit test that lock down behavior. So very often, the very first things we attempt to do when we work with legacy code is put in tests if there's no tests already in the code. So that if we make a mistake, if we make a problem, it immediately notifies us. And we do this, we start by doing this typically with intractable legacy code. It's really hard to write a good test. So we write what we call pinning tests. These are not tests that could go wrong for a single reason. These are gross tests, tests that test a full set of things. Because the idea is that it's very hard for us with a lot of existing code to get in and actually test um, when there's all these dependencies going on. So the first thing we want to do is start to get those dependencies under control so that we can isolate code. And when we can isolate code, then we can write a good test for the behavior that we have isolated. And that's what we're trying to do so that we can lock down those behaviors and then we can start to refactor the implementation of the behaviors. That's the idea, but it's complex, right? There's a lot of steps involved. There's a lot of techniques to learn. There's a lot of refactorings to learn. There are actually moves that you do, uh, kind of like chess moves <laughs> in a sense. So you have to learn those. You, you learn how to uh, do techniques around like dependency injection and other kinds of techniques. So there's a lot to learn to be able to do this competently. And it, unfortunately, there are just a few books on the subject which are really good, but there's not a lot of material. And so you got to really explore and sort of figure it out for yourself, which is such a shame. I think it's the number one thing that developers should be focused on uh, if you are serious about being a professional software developer. Why don't I have a course on the subject? Oh, I would love to, because when I survey developers and I say, you know, what's most important? What do you think is like the things that really need to be understood? People don't point to this. They point to learning a framework or another language or, or whatever. And those things you can learn on your own. Those things are well documented. The things that really I think we need help mentorship in our industry with is the the bigger the bigger chunks, the like, how do we refactor? How do we create good designs? How do we use patterns? Those things are not t talked about very much. And that's the stuff that I want to talk about on this channel. Yeah. And so if that is of interest to you, please subscribe, like, and then it'll go out to you and you'll be notified, but also other people will be notified uh, who are interested in this kind of stuff. Okay.